I know Katie. I know that she has the allergy. How does a mother passing by know more than her? I can't administer serious medication just because some rich lady stopped Stop her. talking. Topher, I am not leaving my kids in the care of this idiot. Are you going to do it now, or do I have to call the rest of the board? I get it, Lara, but we can't do this thing bang, bang. I need a licensed nurse on premises at all times. Hey, Mo, it's Lara. Look, I know you're working nights, but I need your help. Can you come do a shift here at the Horace School right now? Oh, you're the best. My cousin will be here in 45 minutes. I'll cover until then. Fully licensed. Bye. Thanks so much, everybody. Give it up one more time. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. It's really nice to have you. I've been a fan of yours for a long time. Well, thank you. <laughs> Let's talk about Billions. You're moving into season two. Oh, yeah. I have seen the first episode. It's just as great as all of the episodes from great. last season. I do like it. I gotta ask you, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to get it in a, be in a great movie, but it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to be in a great show where you get episode and script after script and director after director, all of which are probably incredible to work with. What is it like going to work every day on this show for you? Shitty. Um, <laughs> It's amazing. I mean, it really is. You know, it's that the... Sorry. Stick with shitty. You just, you, you really set it up there. Um, no, it's really fantastic. It truly is. I mean, I, when I first got the script and then learned that um, Damian Lewis and Paul Giamatti were attached to it, uh, you know, it already gave it that much more credibility. But the writing is brilliant. And um, to play a really strong, powerful woman... Um, who is equal to her husband and is respected, mutual respect is beautiful. So, you know, going to work every day with these guys who are brilliant and, and theater trained actors, I feel like I'm in a, in a wonderful acting lesson every day and learning so much. Um, and aside from that, in between action and cut, we have so much fun. I mean, Damien's like a charming Brit who's just whip smart and, and funny as hell. So we have a lot of laughs in between takes. You kind of have to be, you know, happy and, and joking around in between all these heavy scenes. Your character uh, moving into this season seems like she might have had enough a little bit, no? Uh, uh, I'm not allowed to give it away. <laughs> She's had enough of a lot of things, sure, yeah. I mean, she will tell you exactly how she feels. She never sugarcoats anything, um, which is great to play because I'm the complete opposite. I'm like, kill him with kindness, and she's just, kill him, um, which is great because we all know we want to kill certain people. Not, like, not really kill, but kind of, but you can't really say it. So I get to do it in the show, which is great. Um, um, but yeah, and now I forgot what your question was because I just uh, I don't even went think into it was killing. a question. I think it was just a <laughs> sort of a tee up for you. I don't think it was much of a question. Tee up for me to talk about killing people. It's but great. yeah, who do you want to kill? I'm not going to tell you. Who are you going to kill? I'm not going to tell you that. Uh, what I love about your, your relationship with Damien is I feel like the m most shows like this would very quickly fall into there's multiple affairs or something like that. And that isn't really the case with, with your relationship. No, they are, I mean, if anything, this is why I love them. I think, it, so in the first, um, in the first um, season, I, I, there was an opportunity for Bobby to cheat on his wife. It was very clear. And I love that they, they didn't have him cheat because I think we would have all lost interest in him and, and his family situation. Um, it's also something that we've seen so much so of much. It's since The Sopranos. It's stereotype like stereotype. Yeah, um, it's like since The Sopranos, it's like, oh, yeah. you, you have a male lead here? Okay, he's got to be cheating on his wife all day. Yeah, time. and I mean, I think I would have quit if that were the case um, because I really believe in this couple and, and what they do have is that core family value that keeps them together. And they, they both come from humble beginnings, um, blue collar families, so they really get each other. Um, and they are a team. They have this partnership that is so important to both of them. Um, so, uh, you know, I think that the way they put this couple together is really smart and it makes you root for them even more. Um, it, which is also interesting about this show because you kind of flip flop back and forth between who's the good guy and who's the bad guy. Um, I feel like we're obviously the good guys, but um, 
you know, everyone has their opinion. <laughs> now, you, you said that uh, she's, you know, she doesn't kill them with kindness. She kind of is a straight shooter and just yeah. kills them. You, and you, on the other hand, kill people with kindness. And you also kind of came up a little more in comedy, yeah. right? Like your first sort of big roles that we would have noticed you were in were like the Heartbreak Kid and sort of big comedy movies. What's it like for you to jump into something like this where it's not that much of a, maybe there's a joke or two here or there or a witty line, yeah. but there's not much sort of, you know, pratfalls. There aren't, <laughs> aren't as many pratfalls no. in this. No, no, it's definitely not as crazy and out there as some of the comedies that I've done. Um, but it's really exciting for me because it's a new step um, in a different direction and it's a new challenge and um, learning experience and it's daunting. I'm, I'm, I was so nervous the first few weeks also just because I was intimidated by my co-stars. Yes, I, I just, I think they're so talented and brilliant and I feel like this fake who's come in from the comedy world who's trying my, you know, my hands at drama and they, they're these accomplished theater actors. So I was really, really nervous. Um, how does that play out on set? Do you end up finishing every take by going like, what, was, that, was I okay? Was that okay? No, oh. no, I'm not that annoying. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I, didn't, I didn't assume I, you were. <laughs> I, I, I make a joke, you know, I try to keep things light because that's my go-to when I feel uncomfortable. Um, so, but we have, luckily they're such wonderful, inclusive, um, you know, collaborative actors. So, I mean, it's not Damien's fault that I felt intimidated because he was so lovely and, and I just, you know, it's, it's, a new, it's a new genre for me. So, um, but I also like that. I like being nervous and you feel alive when you go to work and it's something new every day and it's a new challenge and it's, you know, pushing yourself to new limits. So it's exciting. It's uh, it's it's brilliant casting with you. They made an incredible decision having you Thanks. on the show. <laughs> and I'm curious uh, what that process was like. Did they did you have to audition for them, or did they come to oh, you? Oh yeah, really? um, yeah, 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 yeah. Because it was that thing of you know. Well, the show creators said afterwards. They said when they heard my name thrown out there, they said, Yeah, sure, we like her, but she does mainly comedy. I don't know if she can do this. And I didn't know if I could do it either. So it was really a good idea to do an audition. But it was. Um, Christmas holidays, they were starting to shoot the pilot in January, so they were sort of rushing it. So it was actually a Skype meeting with uh, show creators, David and Brian. Um, had a lovely meeting, and I thought, oh, great, maybe I don't have to do the audition, and this is such a good meeting. And then <laughs> right at then they go, so do you mind putting yourself on tape for us? And I was like, oh, God, yeah, of course I will. Um, and so I did, and, and self-taped, and did it about a million times to try to get it right and sent it in, um, and they liked it, and had the director sort of give a few directions and self-taped again, and, and then got word that they were gonna take a chance on me. That's amazing. So that was really exciting, yeah. Can I ask, when you, were you a comedian before getting into, into comedy movies, or was it something that you got cast in a comedy movie and then all of a sudden that lane was kind of built for you? Yeah, it was, when I came out to LA, um, the first job I got was in comedy, and then all of a sudden I was in it. I just, you know, I grew up with parents that were so sarcastic and embarrassing that I, it's so easy, I don't mind embarrassing myself because I, no one can embarrass me more than my parents. Um, so it just kind of was easy to go in and just be silly on camera. Um, but no, I, I was in, I, I grew up in Toronto and um, was going to university studying psychology. It was a very different path that I was gonna take. So comedy was the farthest from my mind. What was the, and what was the first comedy that, that, that you got into? It, How did it happen? Uh, it was the, well, <laughs> oh. first it was Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So yep. That's a good movie. Yeah, it is. The The part was very revealing. Um, <laughs> but at that point you take what you can get um, it was a job, and it was, it was a fun movie, for sure. But then, after that, the first sort of <laughs> real job <laughs> was on HBO um, with Lisa Kudrow. The comeback. The comeback. Which is the most underrated comedy I think America has ever actually, has ever put out. Oh, it is, dang. I love that show so much. It's Never got what it deserved. Show. It was just, I think it was a bit before its time, you know? It was a decade ago, it was uncomfortable, it was a, a, a lead female character who you just kind of, it was hard to, to 
root for her because you felt so bad for her. It was hard to watch. Um, I loved about it. That's my, what I that's loved my about kind it of too. comedy. Yeah. yeah, me too. But you feel bad while making me laugh, <laughs> yeah, please. Exactly. Um, so that was it. As soon as that happened, then the door sort of opened and um, got the opportunity to go audition for comedic films, and the next one was Heartbreak Kid with Ben Stiller. What was it like working with uh, Lisa Kudrow on the comeback when you first started? Because you're new to this, and she's, you know, at that point, by the time she did the comeback, she was kind of a, she's kind of a legend. A superstar, yeah. It was, it was perfect because the show was actually about this young girl who gets to work with her idol that she's idolized growing up. Um, what was the name of the sitcom again that, that, um, that they were? It was called, oh, geez, now I'm going to forget. Uh, oh, wow. We're all Her name was Aunt Sassy. Yeah, that <laughs> Aunt Sassy. Um, I can't remember what the show within the show was called, but it was really paralleling life. I was this girl who was enamored and couldn't believe I was working with this legend, and that's basically what it was in real life. So um, I can't give myself that much credit because I was just being myself. I was really excited to be working with Lisa. Um, and it was just a really well-written show. Again, really great. And then you got on The Heartbreak Kid, which was the Farrelly Brothers. Yes. Which is pretty incredible. Yeah, it, that, was, that was also really a nerve-wracking process because I went in and did an audition, first for the Farrelly Brothers, and I, you know, I walked into the waiting room and there were all these established actresses who were waiting in the waiting room and uh, did the audition and got a call back. And when I got a call back, it was with Ben Stiller. And he kind of looked at me and he said, you know, the script isn't really done yet. Let's just throw away the sides and improv. <laughs> I was like, oh, Jesus, I can't, I don't know what I'm doing. And sometimes when I get really nervous, I just bumble, uh, babble, bumble. See, now I don't even know how to speak English. Swedish is my first language, all right, people? <laughs> it's my excuse. Um, what does bumble mean in Swedish? I don't Swedish? know. <laughs> it means babble in Swedish. <laughs> um, makes, sense, makes sense, got it. But... <laughs> But we did it. It just kind of it went off. We clicked. It went really well and, and improv with Ben Stiller and got the job. So that was really exciting. And was your first dramatic turn kind of with, the, with Watchmen? Yeah, yeah, that was the first one, um, which was, uh, that was a nine-month venture. So we had three months of training, fight training, and, um, and Navy SEAL training. So, I mean, I... I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to get really graphic here for a second, but I, after the first week of training, I actually could not wipe my own butt. I couldn't even move backwards. It was so painful. I mean, when you train with a Navy SEAL, it is no joke. Um, but we had three months of training before we even started. Oh, yeah. Who wiped it? Yeah. 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 You can't. Doesn't you matter. Can't, I'm so sorry. Doesn't you matter. just can't leave it there. There's like, was there a higher I am. person? I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave you hanging. <laughs> Still feel indentured to that person in any way? It may not have been a person. Um, I'm just gonna make it a mystery. <laughs> uh, anyways. Sorry, man. So, <laughs> so last time I'm gonna tell that story. Uh, I'll just find a better moderator to tell yeah, it to. Yeah, He's not gonna right. follow up. <laughs> He's not gonna follow up. Um, anyway, after the training and when I could continue to wipe my own. <sighs> You know what? We went to Vancouver and shot for six months. It was a six-month shoot to get that film done. Um, and that was pretty incredible. Uh, usually a movie takes about three months to shoot. But because there was so much action and big sets and, um, and CGI, uh, there was a lot of scenes where you're standing on Mars and all you're looking out at is a big green screen. Um, which was really interesting because that's when the real acting comes in because you you really have to pretend like you're looking out at Mars. But it was, a, it was a beautiful experience. It was incredible. Those are those instances that I imagine it's hard not to notice your acting and pretending personal. You know what I mean? Like if you have people in front of you in a whole yeah. set, like you said, you can sort of lose yourself. You can but react to yeah. what's happening in front of you. It's the difference of like, you know, suddenly you can hear, you can probably hear yourself acting a little bit and see it all happening. And yeah. You could get lost in, in self-consciousness, I would imagine. A hundred percent. That happens a lot. Even without Mars and the green screen, you get lost in your head sometimes. And that is the worst thing you can do is once you start thinking and acting, then you're screwed. You know, you just want to just let it go and be in the moment and, and be present with your acting partner. 
Now, Billions, uh, you know, moving into its second season, a lot of times after the first season, creators of shows sort of start tailoring the show a bit more to their actors' strengths. Do you feel like Brian and 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 da da David, 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 excuse me, do okay. you um, do you feel like they're they're starting to do that a little bit? That they're sort of working with you a bit more on like where you see the character going and yeah, I um, it is a bit more. They're they're very clear on what they want um, and the storylines that they have in mind. Uh, which I love when you have leaders at the helm who are really uh, clear on their vision. Um, but definitely, you know, you for anyone, once you've played a character for a while, even towards the end of the first season, we all start to understand how they tick. And same same goes for second season. There were, they were able to tap into a bit more of how we were playing the characters. And, and they're very smart that way. So... Um, you know all the all the the street smart smart stuff that that Lara portrays that brings sort of a freshness to this world of billionaires. They definitely tapped into more of that in the second season. Right, because she didn't come from a, a world. She's usually with rich people. You're born rich and you become more Ivy rich League as you schools. Go. Yeah. And, yeah, and no, She's both not. her and Bobby are from humble beginnings. You know, from blue collar families and. Um, and that's where we sort of paralleled a little bit because I come from very humble beginnings and then coming into Hollywood and navigating that whole world um, versus her coming into this world of billionaires and hedge funds and um, the financial world is, is, is a new place for her. And what she brings to it is definitely a different take and a different approach than most of those women who live in that world. What was the sort of first thing that you learned personally when you came into the Hollywood world, for lack of a you know better reference towards it, was it sort of like don't act so impressed all the time when people try to play it cool? No, oh, I didn't play it cool at all. I was so excited to be there. I mean, I remember the first time I walked onto um, Disney Studios for an audition, and I must have taken a million pictures. I was so excited to be there. Um, but after a while, after the excitement sort of goes away and you start realizing that uh, you got to treat it like a real job and start making connections and you know it, there there are politics to every business that you're in and that's sort of the game that you learn over time that's taken a long time to figure out and navigate and it's so important to have a clear goal and a clear vision of sort of the big picture of where you want your career to go and what direction. You don't get lost in the day-to-day -day politics. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to get lost and you don't want to just kind of do anything. I think in the beginning you, you take any jobs that you can get in and then once you get in, then you start tailoring it to how you'd like to see your career go. Well, at what point do you think in your career you started being able to do that or started at least thinking like that? Um, probably just recently, <laughs> just, um, a like, couple like, years ago, no, like two. <laughs> today. Um, and what are you doing here? No, just I kidding. don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I still haven't figured it out. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I think once I had my kid, uh, which was almost four years ago, everything shifted and the importance of it was way more life or death. Now I have someone that I'm responsible for and that I have to raise in this world and who do I want to be to him and um, where is my integrity and what does that look like for me? And so I, there was a lot more of a thought process that, that I went through after having a child and also a Pandora's box of emotions just opened up after having him and I, I just thought, okay, these are great new tools um, that I want to utilize in different genres and not just the comedy. Let's open it up to the audience for some questions right right here. You have a microphone. I assume that means there's a question. Thank you for being here. So to pick back to pick it back on the question and how you started your career in Hollywood, like what what else have you learned from yourself in your career and what would you tell the younger you that started in your career? Huh. Um okay, so the younger me, I would say take a deep breath. <laughs> calm the hell down and focus because I was so scattered. I was just excited and I was more about being there than actually focusing on the work. Um, and after a few years, I realized that and started taking lessons and just really getting into um, 
the work behind it all, which is really important, being prepared and coming in prepared and making choices for your auditions. And before before that, it was just kind of like, I'm in Hollywood and I'm going to go, here's a script, all right, I'll read these lines. And I had no idea what I was doing. Um, and so, you know, I guess the, the learning from that is just, it's been mostly about focus and, and a clear vision. I think, if anything, whenever you, you know, a lot of people like to do vision boards and things like that, and it really is just to get a clear um, journey or path that you want to take so they have some sort of goal in mind. Next question. Oh, hi. Hello. Before I get to my question, um, in regards to your comment about you feeling like you are a fake in drama, mm -hmm. you are more than holding your own against oh, your cast thank members. You. <laughs> you, I mean, you are a pit bull in a skirt on this show, so <laughs> never feel like, like you're a fake. That. Thank you're welcome. you. My, Did you say pit, pit bull in a skirt? skirt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> my question is, having the ability to now sink your teeth into this multi-layered character, how do you feel as an actress now that you've gotten to this point in your career? Um, I feel really proud. Um, I feel really good about it and uh, excited because I'm finally getting to do some work um, that is is challenging me in a different way. It's um, asking me to be vulnerable in many different ways. And um, yeah, there's a, there's a part of me that feels like I'm moving in the right direction, that this is the path that I want to be taking. Yeah. I'm just still imagining a pit bull in a skirt. <laughs> it's, it's really making, making me really happy. I love that. <laughs> A literal hey. pit bull in a star. Uh, who, who, uh, next question. We got one over hey. there. Hey, Molly. Oh, uh, hi. So I'm a huge fan of the Watchmen film. I was wondering okay. how comfortable or uncomfortable the costume was, <laughs> and would you do another superhero film? Oh yeah, I would love to do another superhero film, um, and not be able to move in certain directions. Um, Wipe your butt. <laughs> that costume was so uncomfortable. Um, it's latex. It's like putting a condom over your whole body. <laughs> it's tight. It's then singed in with a corset on top of it. So they wanted to singe my waist in three inches smaller than what it actually is every day so that my shoulders look broader. There was one day actually where, and you couldn't really bend your, you, when I bent my arms, I would get those little blood suction thingies because it was it was squeeze pinching my arms and my behind my knees um and then uh and then one day we took we didn't have time to take the corset off for lunch so that towards the end of the day when we finally took the corset off i could feel my lunch go down into my stomach and i was like oh there's dinner um it was not comfortable not at all I was so happy people asked me if i kept the costume you couldn't pay me enough money to keep that costume <laughs> can see it in the movies. <laughs> what is it like um, walking to and from your trailer in a costume like that? When totally you're normal, what do you movie? mean? I don't imagine, I mean, we were People talking, thought I was the lady of the night. But we were talking before about the, the, the moments where you get self-conscious and start recognizing the pretending. I would imagine the moments were like after cut, between action and cut, you know, or after, before action and after cut, yeah. you, you're, you're like, what's going on? We here? had a few, a few moments like that, um, myself and Patrick Wilson and Billy Crudup, who, Billy Crudup is the, the big blue man who's naked. And Billy Crudup is about m my height. He's not eight feet tall, but he was in a, because he ended up being CGI'd, for those of you who don't know the film, and it, in, in, while we were shooting, he was in um, sort of like a white pajamas with a skull cap and had blue LED lights all over and dots all over his face. And he's supposed to be playing this godlike figure and, you know, and the battery packs would make his pants kind of scoot down and look like he, you know, took a crap in his pants. And, and we're trying to be serious. So a lot of times in between, we would just laugh at each other going, what are we doing? We're I just like want Halloween costumes. I want the photos of you guys at lunch, you know, oh like of the God. four of you sitting around just like just doing so normal things yeah. with those costumes. <laughs> it was crazy. It was crazy. We had a lot of laughs at our at ourselves in between moments where we were just kind of like realizing how silly it felt. Well, I have to let you go. Billions premieres this Sunday, right? Yes. At 10 p.m. And the first episode is awesome. You guys are going to love it. Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you guys.